I have seen a lot of beautiful places during my years of traveling. And I have ridden many coastal roads. But there are not many that just leave you speechless. Because you can't really grasp their beauty. This coastal road in Oman is one of those special places. Maybe the most beautiful and remote coastal ride in the world. Good morning from this beautiful place with this beautiful background. Uh, we will be on the road soon today. <laughs> so far it's to be a very long day. I hope we get a bit further than yesterday. But it was so beautiful, you always have to stop. Like every morning, the first thing we had to do was packing up our motorcycle mess. And soon we were on the road. So for my travel partner there is no life before coffee and he hates any kind of sightseeing. So he wants to drive to the restaurant we went to yesterday first and I want to go to the harbor of this town to check it out and then I will pick him up again. Or maybe not. Hasik is a small active fishing village with the typical Omani fisher boats lined up at its harbor. Back in the days, Hasik was well known to Arab seafarers as a trading center on the Arabian Sea, particularly for merchants trading in top quality frankincense due to its natural sheltered harbor. In earlier times, traders used to meet on the edge of the town to barter over their wares which would then be loaded onto ships and transported to East Africa, Yemen and India. So guys, do you think I should pick up my travel partner now? Maybe I just leave him there at the gas station. Imagine I would just be gone. And because I'm doing the routing, he has no clue where to go and would just sit there forever and forever drinking his Omani coffee, like out of a fairy tale. I tell you, when you have views like this before even having breakfast, you know it's going to be a good day. And I can't believe how unbelievably beautiful this coastal road is. On our way, we first passed the native cascading waterfall that is a famous picnic spot among Omanis during the monsoon season. Then we came by a military checkpoint. And then the road started to wind up the cliffs and mountains of the coast. This ride is absolutely spectacular. I don't even know what to say. It's ridiculous how beautiful this is here. Wow. Surprisingly, nothing much has been written in guidebooks or online about this part of Oman's coastal road. The only information that I had beforehand was that it is a nice ride and that there are no real hotels or accommodations until you reach the town Dokum. But it had already turned out that nice ride was the understatement of the year and the road north of Hasik will make you regret that you didn't come here earlier and it will make you question how you could ever call another road the most beautiful coastal ride in the world.
I really have no words for this. It is so beautiful. It's just ridiculous. Just ridiculous. How can something be so beautiful? It's nearly driving me mad because it is so nice. I already see the newspaper titling Died of a beauty overdose in Oman. Along the way you can find several viewpoints over the canyon-like landscape to the sea and a small oasis. I think this whole road here is just crazy. I mean, it is literally cut through the rocks. And actually, it's no wonder that there are landslides like here every now and then. I can't even imagine how much work it must be to keep it in such a good shape. Because besides of these landslides, the road is really just flawless. really really remote here it's just a road and us and we are down here in the flats now on the left hand you can still see the cliffs and on the right there is the ocean indeed we had not met any other tourists or travelers since we left Salala on the coastal road did I already mention that the whole region felt like a jackpot to us So guys, we really need to find some breakfast now. I'm super hungry and there is only a town or village or settlement every 80 kilometers or so. So we better take this chance. Shalem is a little settlement with a few houses and hole in the wall restaurants. And we went for the same strategy like on our ride to the Rub al Khali desert. So what's your name? My name is Abdul Subhan from Bangladesh. Bangladesh? Yes. And you're making us the best breakfast then? Yes, yes. But what's your name? <laughs> My name is Leah. Yeah, oh, nice name. Oh, I think so too. <laughs> and this is our nice breakfast sandwich today. We went for the famous egg sandwich. This time, the second best egg sandwich in Oman. <laughs> oh, oh, wow. Wow. That looks good. <laughs> oh, la, la. Very nice. Let's get out of here. It is actually very funny. You are in this town and you see a few people and cars and so on and it feels much more populated immediately. But then you leave these places and you're back all by yourself on the road with nobody else around. The road from Shalem was much more straight than the winding mountain roads before and took us through some desert flats and up to the top of a plateau on the cliffs. Wow, it's so interesting. Roads here in Oman can be super, super steep. I don't know if you see that on the camera, but this road is pretty steep and there are even warning signs that say to reduce speed and turn into a low gear. And you see that down there? I hope we can find some petrol there. According to my research, it is the only petrol station in the surroundings. Pretty nice place for a petrol station, right at the harbor and more or less directly at the sea. Not so bad. Which is the city? Lakbi, Lakbi. Lakbi? Lakbi. Lakbi. Go one, uh, 100 kilos. 100. And this is for fishing? Yeah. Uh, what they fish? Fish? Lobster? Lobster, 
So that's the lobster from here. Wow. Delicious. Cool. Again, we were able to witness what these places along the coast are famous for, for their fishing. So the guy that filled up our bikes told us that the next village is about 100 kilometers away but we will actually even go further because we want to go to the town Dukum which is the biggest settlement and port here along the coast and super super important for the trading here in Oman. And there are actually quite a few hotels again so worrying about places to stay will probably not be on our agenda today. point of the day, I still thought that we would stay in one of the hotels of Dukum that we were about to reach after a 480 km long ride from Hasik, meanwhile traveling over mostly straight but still kind of scenic roads. But I of course was so wrong. When we reached Dukum, we just didn't really vibe with the surroundings and after traveling in nearly complete solitude since our arrival in Oman, it just felt so wrong to go to a big hotel with a pool and the name Plaza, Crown or Star. So we did the only thing that seemed reasonable to us. We continued the ride to the next settlement we knew of, 180 kilometers from Dukum, where there were of course no hotels or guest houses of any kind. Wow, there's really a big change since Tukum. You really feel that it's an important port because there are a lot of trucks here on the roads. I guess they go to Muscat and the more northern and more populated areas. And this ride is definitely not as lonely anymore as it has been so far south of Tukum. Haters might say that the landscape got more boring in this part of Oman, but I actually didn't mind. I found it quite relaxing. And when we turned off the main road, we were riding into the dunes again. We turned off now from the main road and there is a sign now that says careful dunes and we want to go to a place that's called Al Kaluf and some of you might wonder how we found it and do you remember this restaurant we went to yesterday at the gas station? No? One of the locals on the table next to us showed us a few pictures of um, Al Kaluf because there is a secret cave on the ocean. No? So we wrote it down and now we are here. That's how it goes sometimes. The closer we got to Al Kaluf, the bigger the dunes got. And when we reached the town, the sun was about to go down again. So this is Al Kaluf downtown now. We need to find a place to stay or worst case, we stay in our tent. On our arrival, we started to ask around for a hotel. But it turned out that the people we asked maybe didn't exactly understand what we were looking for because they sent us to a restaurant, to a shop and to the mosque. We were not lucky yet. Al Kaluf has actually two areas, the one we just have been to and one that looks a bit more residential. Maybe we can find something there. Actually very interesting, you see all these signs at the houses here. I think they say that they are for rent as vacation houses, but everything looks pretty empty and not many people around here at all. 
but then we pulled the same trick like last time in Hasik. We stopped the only car that we saw on the roads and it turned out that the guys in the car had a house for rent. So we ended up in a typical Omani vacation villa. And let me show you my favorite bedding that is with plastic under the sheet. You hear that? Very nice. And the guys who rented our villa to us just brought us a full box of dates. How cool is that? And like always, we ended our day with a nice meal at the best and only restaurant in town. Most roadside restaurants in Oman are by the way not run by Omanis, but by Bangladeshis or Pakistanis. And the food we got on this trip so far as well reflected that. But like always, it was a feast. Are you as stunned by the Omani coast as I am? If yes, give this video a thumbs up and comment. Next Thursday, we will first make an excursion to the secret Humrad cave close to Al Kaluf and then finally leave the coast. And after fighting our way through strong sandstorms and heavy winds for hundreds of kilometers, we will reach the stunning rugged mountains of Oman. See you on the road.